Throughout PUBG, your squad is going to find itself in a diverse set of situations. No game is the same and no fight is the same. But understanding the type of situation you are in could be the difference between winning and losing. My name is Jabroni, coach of Ghost Gaming PUBG, and in this episode of PUBG Masterclass, we're going to go over the different roles you and your teammates may have while grinding through your adventures with the new ranking system. Welcome to the introduction to Team Composition. The goal of this video is to give you the ability to analyze your position and situation, understand your role, and perform in a way that benefits the overall good of the squad. As we go through, I will do my best to cover the terminology and responsibilities of each role. But as always, if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to post them in the comments below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to be the first to see upcoming videos. Now that my introduction is done, let's get started by learning to understand the most important role in PUBG, your IGL. IGL stands for in-game leader, and in short, that is exactly what this player is. Your IGL should be the player where you put your faith to have major choices decided. These choices will include things like rotations, when to crash, and when to push a fight. They are the quarterback of your team, also known as your shot caller. When deciding who will IGL your squad, it's pivotal to your team's success that you all agree ahead of time and practice with that player in that role. Getting used to calling can be a bit of a learning curve, and it's important that this player develops over time with their decisions, just as any other player would develop over time with their gun skill. I'm calling the shots right now, but we definitely have like a round table approach. Like if anybody has a good idea, they'll float it by and I'll just like make the final decision based off that information. Everybody now let's jump into a few of the basic responsibilities for an IGL. First, deciding rotations. Your shot caller is going to have the responsibility of making the final decision in a given rotation. As a team, you should all be feeding this player good information, what spots are occupied, identifying any splits by an opponent, and potential fights you can get involved in. When a given circle pops, a good IGL should be stepping in and immediately being active in calling the next move. In many instances, these rotations and moves are going to become a little sketchy. A strong in-game lead will need to make quick decisions on how to handle these situations, whether to reroute, take a fight, or even be more patient and wait for a better opportunity or better information. Along with rotations, your shot caller is going to be responsible for deciding how to approach situations when a fight is imminent. In some cases, you may be preparing for a crash by looking for knocks on an opponent. In other cases, you may walk silently up to an unsuspecting team, or even push two other teams already in full confrontation looking for a third party. As an IGL, it may get difficult at times, but it is important to do your best to calmly digest the information your team is giving you, and use that to make decisions you feel are best. Yeah, you guys were talking over each other all the time. I didn't have time to place a single word. All the end game, though. Chapter 2. Scout. The definition of a scout is fairly simple to understand. Look somewhere, normally in front of your team prior to movement, in order to gain information. Unlike an IGL, a scouting role is not going to be predetermined prior to entering a game. Situationally, all players will at some point scout. In the early game, scouts will usually move further ahead of their team, stopping at predetermined positions in order to find any information they can relay to the rest of their squad. This works well when using a player with a two-seater motorcycle, as they can not only move quickly, but rapidly drive past a position they believe is available and disengage safely more times than others if a threat appears. While not making any rotations and playing inside circle, all players should be acting as a scout when they can. Here are some things you should be looking out for while you are gaining information. Check for nearby compounds or defensible positions being free or occupied. Look for potential wide splits by opponents. Is there somebody playing solo? Is there a team in a 2-2 split? Try to gain information with the kill feed. See or hear a player get knocked to the east? Grab a name. Having information that a team is lacking players can make your next move that much easier. By relaying this information to your squad, you'll be able to make a more educated move when the time arises. Chapter 3, Sniper. Snipers are hands down the most controversial role of any team's composition. In the current meta, it is strongly believed that snipers are outdated due to nerfs to all bolt action rifles. However, while you're playing through the new skill-based rating in public games, I can promise you that having one player running a bolt who is talented shooting it is going to be extremely effective. In order to make sure you are utilizing this player to the best of your ability, it is important you give him or her the proper gear. Firstly, make sure your sniper is equipped with the highest range scope your team has to offer. On top of that, in the early game while looting 
shooting, make sure you call out any bolt action you see. In the case your team is blessed by a crate, be sure to give the three helm to your sniper, as he will more commonly be trading headshots with opponents. As a sniper, understanding what you are meant to be doing is vital to your usefulness to your squad. Looking for knocks on players and cover around you is paramount for a few different reasons. For one, you will gain info for your team on who is in front of you. On top of that, you will be removing helmets and gear from an opponent. In some cases, your team will have no other opportunity besides crashing a compound that an opposing team is holding. As a sniper, it's your time to shine. First and foremost, declare to your squad ahead of time that you are looking for a knock on the target squad. Make sure the team realizes that when you hit a shot, they need to be ready to hop into their vehicles and slam into the opponent's cover. If the enemy is being cautious of your existence, it may be difficult to pick up the opening knock. In this case, don't be scared to stay back as the others on your team send it to the target. A greedy opponent will always peek a window in order to get free damage on an incoming vehicle, which may line up a free headshot for you. Snipers, don't get discouraged by a lack of kills compared to your teammates. Although frags may be low, your vital damage in a game could be the difference between dying early and a chicken dinner. Chapter 4, Support. In a simple definition, a support player is someone who takes the less than glamorous roles in the game under their own responsibility. Whether it is holding a potential threat that may be looking to make a play on your team, or even just watching behind late, a support player will frequently give up personal stats in order to protect the team. Now, although in some cases who is playing a support role will be situation-based, it's good to find a player that naturally adapts into this position. Similar to an IGL, this player can focus on a specific aspect of the game, finding potential threats and keeping them under control, allowing for the rest of the squad to put out offensive damage. As someone who plays the support role, try to notice when the rest of your team is tunneling on one thing. If you can understand these moments and put yourself in the boring and protective position, you'll be able to keep your squad safe while they create more room for later movement. Chapter 5, Entry Fragger. Your Entry Fragger is going to be the player you have in the lead while pushing. This player is in most cases putting themselves on the line to get knocked, so you can follow up with a quick trade. In most team fights, this is pretty simple. Just shoot the guy shooting your teammate. In buildings, however, is where it may take a little more practice. If you are entry fragging and you know there are opponents inside, it is important you understand that in this situation, your job is to push through a door, clear enough space for your teammate to come behind you, and relay any information you can as quickly as possible. As you push through, pick a likely angle that you expect a player could be, either hard left or right in most cases, and prepare to instantly look for a spray down. In a case of a 2v2 or even a 3v2, you as the entry fragger putting out any damage is a huge help. Try timing your push with grenades. A quick flash or even the sound of a frag can throw off your opponent and make them less aware while your push is coming through. Lastly, as an entry fragger, you need to understand this push is in your control. Your teammates will be playing off of you. If you hesitate, stutter step, block doorways, or don't give any information, you are setting your teammate up to fail. Don't be scared to use duos in public games to practice entry fragging in 1v2 situations. The more practice you have with your teammate, the smoother this will go in the future. Chapter 6, Flanker. Now similar to a lot of other roles you see in PUBG, a flanker is not something that is going to be predetermined before a game begins. Your flanker will likely be on a fight by fight basis, and in sub fight cases even, you won't have any at all. The idea here is pretty simple. Get in a fight, assess a fight, and if you have the opportunity, push a side flank to corner an opponent. As a team gets used to this more and more and working together, you will be able to quickly realize when you are the player in the flanker position. Don't hesitate, push fast, and suffocate your opponent. Chapter 7, Spoiler. Now we talked a little bit about the spoiler role in our guide to ranked PUBG that was uploaded a few weeks ago. The definition is simple. A spoiler is a player on your squad holding an unsuspecting angle or position, usually when your teammate is on the defensive. Understanding when to utilize this is where you can get your money's worth. Decipher when an opposing team is needing to push you. Find a spot somewhat hidden and lay in wait. Ideally, the opponent will walk right into your crosshair and give you a free knock. When playing the spoiler role, be sure to be patient. You're waiting for a firefight to begin and chaos to ensue. 
This will give you the best opportunity to do enough damage to the enemy where they will be unable to recover. As a spoiler, make sure your team is understanding and that is how you will be playing. By giving them this information, they will be able to comprehend that at the beginning of a firefight, you won't be there to assist, and you are waiting on them to bait an opponent into your trap. Guys, that's going to do it for the intro to PUBG Team Composition. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, just drop them down in the comment below. I will be sure to respond to you guys. Thank you so much for watching this video, and as always, good luck in the battle.